So, you want to get started with Japanese literature? Welcome. Maybe you're an anime fan. Maybe you've gulped down before the coffee gets cold in one sitting and you want a bit more. Maybe you read Murakami previously and you weren't really sure whether you got on with it or not. This is the video for you. I offer you six different books in five different categories. The popular choice, the subversive choice, the classic choices, the toxic choice and the quirky choice. Each of these is a perfectly good jumping off point to explore the world of Japanese fiction. In fact, I'll do you one better and give you some further suggestions if any of these books in particular take your fancy. Sounds good? Brilliant. Let's go. Okay, we are starting with the popular choice, Kafka on the Shore by Haruki Murakami. The man, the myth, the legend. I think that anyone starting off one of these videos without talking about Haruki Murakami is being a little bit disingenuous. Regardless of what opinion you may eventually come to form on his work, uh, he's clearly one of the best starting off points for Japanese literature and his uh, global appeal is massive. His writing style is light, easy to read, but it has this certain depth to it, this strangeness that's difficult to put your finger on. A self-confessed obsessive of American and French culture, uh, Haruki Murakami is an author that potentially has more of a broad, wide appeal to Western audiences coming into Japanese literature for the first time. Kafka on the Shore was my choice for a couple of reasons. Firstly, it was the first book that I read by Haruki Murakami, and it's one of the books that really helped get me into Japanese literature, so I know it's a good recommendation in that sense. I was enamoured by the story of the boy and his companion, the crow, as well as an older man called Nakata, who's almost childlike in his uh, mentality. And it features all the classic Murakami elements such as Japanese history in the past, jazz, talking to cats, all, all the classics. This book really feels like an encapsulation of all the things that are good about Murakami without going off into his self-indulgent end, which you might find with books such as 1Q84, which I would definitely not recommend as an intro point to Japanese literature. <laughs> so listen, there's a decent chance that you're not going to get along with this. But if you do and you enjoy his kind of meld of nostalgia and dreamlike writing, there's a whole world at your fingertips. I've read 16 Murakami books and his writing runs the whole gamut from like more grounded, uh, normal writing in South of the Border, West of the Sun, or more uh, extravagant, fantastical leanings like in Hard Boil Wonderland and The End of the World. But yeah, for now, Kafka on the Shore, not a bad starting point. The subversive choice is Grotesque by Natsuo Kurino. Murakami is the big beast in Japanese literature. However, recently, if you paid any attention to trends in publishing, you'll notice that it's works written by women that are making the, the real rounds in terms of translated Japanese fiction. When I first bought the works of Natsuo Kurino, it would have been quite a bit of a struggle to find her works in standard British bookstores. Nowadays, I went to my local bookstore and there was a full on pile of, of real world in particular. And this is great news for anyone looking for a different slice of Japanese life. Whether it's Sayaka Murata's convenience store woman or Earthlings or Yoko Ogawa's memory police, uh, really the time couldn't be better to be reading Japanese fiction in translation, especially for works written by women. Much of the popular work in recent years about the alienation that women feel in modern Japanese society is an aging society, it's a sexist, patriarchal society, and these structures dominate the decisions that women are able to make in living their lives. Grotesque is an example of this from the early 2000s and was a forerunner of the kind of works that are achieving popular acclaim today. Centering on the lives of two prostitutes, it's an example of how stifling the patriarchal society of Japan is and the ways in which individual women make decisions within that framework. Karino is a vicious skewerer, as she writes, and it's not exactly like her female protagonists are saints either, they're not. Uh, this isn't a polemic. Her characters are real and wounded, they're not saints. And this book is a really good way to look at a side of Japanese society you maybe might not have thought too much about. If you like this book, you're going to want to read more Carino. Specifically, you're going to want to read out the story of five women who decide to murder their husbands, and also real world, the story of four schoolgirls who become obsessed with a murderer in their class. You're also going to want to read Sayaka Murata, namely Convenience Store Woman, and then Earthlings especially, which is probably the most prominent writer today focusing on this kind of alienation theme. The classic choice, number one, Kokoro by Natsume Soseki. Kokoro is one of the foundational texts of Japanese 20th century literature. The title means heart in Japanese, but I bet you knew that, didn't you? 
you little nerd. Yeah, I see you. Japan, for context, is a country that had to face the coming of modernity very suddenly. For those of you who don't know, it was a closed country for 200 years with limited uh, interaction with the outside world. And following their not so optional opening up and the Meiji Restoration, the whole of society went through rapid change. It was an important theme to much of 20th century literature and Soseki was one of the key authors writing about this. Kokoro in particular is one of the ultimate tales of love, friendship and betrayal. The main character is a young college student who summers in Kamakura, a spa town to the south of Tokyo. He meets an older man there who he calls Sensei, who doesn't have a whole lot going on in his life. Uh, the main highlight is a monthly visit to a grave. As the story goes on, we find out more about his life, his complicated past, and the latter third of his novel is one of the best parts of any Japanese novel, but it takes a slow kind of path to get there. Yeah, absolute classic. Definitely worth a read as an intro to Japanese lit. But alongside that, I want to give you another classic recommendation, and that is The Old Capital by Yasunari Kawabata. Long-time educational fans, Edheads as they're commonly known, will know that my very first video on this channel was about Yasunari Kawabata. It was about the book Snow Country, which I filmed when I actually visited the real snow country in Japan when I used to live there. I would of course recommend that book, but today I'm feeling in a mood for the old capital. Kawabata was the first Japanese author to win the Nobel Prize. He is the author for the spare approach to literature, the kind of literature that Western audiences long associated with Japanese writing. Arguably this is because of his talent as a short story writer, his palm of the hand stories really pack a punch in one or two pages, and he transfers that expertise along to his novels, such as The Old Capital. It's the story of Chieko, a young girl with a kind of, a past that's unknown to her, who's been adopted by a shop owner and kimono designer in Kyoto. Kyoto being the titular Old Capital. Chieko is a foundling. She doesn't know who her parents are. Events kind of conspire to bring together her past and her potential future, all kind of set to the scenic background of Cherry Blossoms. This is Kawabata's last novel, and it's a really good one to get a flavour of what it is that he writes about. Yeah, unequivocal recommendation. A great place to start. Have it as a nice double feature with Kokoro. I'm considering doing a further breakdown of Japanese literature uh, in kind of different time periods. If that's something that you'd be interested in, let me know. I'll think about it. If you like either of these books, there is a whole world to unlock. Kawabata has five or six more great books. I mean, authors such as Junichiro Tanazaki, uh, like really good fiction, The Makioka Sisters, really worth, uh, worth reading. Ogai Mori with Wild Geese is another recommendation. Really, the possibilities are endless. Next, The Toxic Choice, The Sailor Who Fell From The Sea by Yukio Mishima. Let's get this out of the way. The alternative to Kawabata is Yukio Mishima, an admired colleague of his, in fact. There is a subsection of Japanese literature that I do not get on with. We've talked before about the masculine, rigid, darker side of Japanese society. If you ever go online to somewhere like Reddit or 4chan, probably the top recommended Japanese author is Yukio Mishima. You know, there is merit to his writing. The guy tried to launch a coup, but we've all been there, right? Before you get in the comments like, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about, listen. I've tried, okay? I've read Forbidden Colours, I've read Confessions of a Mask, and I have never been able to get into him and the very toxic negative viewpoint of characters and the worlds in which they interact. The Sailor Who Fell With Grace From The Sea is the best of the books that I've read. It's also coincidentally the first Mishima that I read. It tells the story of a boy and his friends who want to live outside of society's order. They become obsessed with the lover of a protagonist's mother, a man who is more tethered in his relationship with the sea than he is to the rest of society. Listen, I can't say I wreck it, but if you want to explore all that Japanese literature has to offer, I would recommend giving it a go. Maybe you'll love it. So many people do, with presumably good reason. If you do like this novel, then uh, Dazai is another one of the writers who I think you'll get on with. No Longer Human is his standout work, and by standout, I of course mean I would rather stand outside in a thunderstorm than read another one of his books. <laughs> Hate it, but you'll see it everywhere. So finally, The Quirky Choice, Kitchen by Banana Yoshimoto. Now that that's done, let's end on something a little bit nicer. I've listed it probably unfairly as The Quirky Choice. There is a fine margin here where it comes to quirkiness in Japanese literature. There are a bunch of novels, popular novels, which I would say aren't that great, but get a free pass because they're being translated from Japanese. A good way for me to know most of the time is if the book has cat in the title, but I think Before the Coffee Gets Cold for me also fits into that category. If you love it, great, I think you're gonna like Kitchen as well. If you don't love them, I think still give Kitchen a try. It's a high quality, relatively short, breezy read. About 120 pages, I think, in total. If you like your books short, queer, magical, 
enjoyable, then you'll like Manane Oshimoto and you'll like Kitchen. Released in 1987 and well ahead of its time, it tells the story of a bereaved girl who is taken in by her friend and her friend's mother, a trans woman, uh, and it kind of covers different themes such as motherhood and grieving and loss in a really impactful but short and sweet way. It's deceptively ordinary, but actually quite moving. And again, it was one of the first translated books that I read and clearly, I'm still into Japanese literature, so maybe give it a go. <laughs> if you like this book, then Hiromi Kawakami is your friend. She can be a bit hit and miss for me, but when she does hit, it's really good. Manazuru is an example of that. I really love that book. I'd also put a rec in here for the other Kawakami, Mieko, who has written such books as Breasts and Eggs and Heaven. So there you have it, six books, five of which I would recommend to you with open arms. If you read these six, it will give you a broad survey of Japanese literature as a whole. As I said, if you want a more in-depth look at different time periods in Japanese literature, let me know. I could talk about Japanese books all day, very happily. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Can't believe I had to talk about bloody Mishima.